In this scene, we've got three apparently unrelated modeling assets. We've got a labyrinth of columns over here. We've got a archway and we've got a bit of a tank cannon assembly. Now, the one thing that these three different modeling assets do actually share in common is that they've been created from a technique that I'm about to show you where basically uh, from just a series of squares, you can end up with perfect circles. So let's have a bit of a look at that. Just going to go to the front view and going to come over to this plane that I've created. Now, I've got about 30 by 30 segments put into this plane. I'm going to change it into a editable poly and show you how this technique works. So go into the poly sub-object level Select a range of polys, let's say, select them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and from that selection of polys, going to go into inset, bring the inset in a little bit, hit the delete button, go to my edge mode, double click on one of the edges to get a nice loop going around, and then come over to the graphite modeling tools, look for the loop group, click that down and there's a loop tools button. Click on the loop tools button and the only thing I'm really interested in at the moment is the circle tool. There's your circle, hit the relax button and bring the circle into the desired size. And that's the basics of what we want to do. Now from there I could uh, create a column, I could create my uh, tank cannon and I can create also my archway. So I'll show you that in a little bit more detail right now. So let's have a look. First of all, if I was to create a column or a tank cannon, which pretty much the same thing as a column, from this, here are the steps that I'd follow. I'd actually go into border mode and I'd just cap off that area. Then go into polygon mode, click that poly, use my extrusion button, extrude that up, tilt it so you can see what's going on, and there we go. There's your column or there's your tank cannon. Now, let's have a look at that again, but this time in the context of creating an archway, which is a really uh, common thing that you will be creating when you're creating any sort of uh, architectural design. Castles, houses, they usually always have arches somewhere, and it's a bit of a pain to figure out how to make those. So, I'll just jump into front view and zoom back in. So let's have a look. We're going to uh, select a range of polys. Again, I'll stick with the 5x5 five five at this stage. Going to inset them in. Delete. Go to edge. Double click. Circle. Now I can use the relax button as I did before, or the scale does the job just as well. Either way is fine. Now, from there what I'll do, go into polygon mode, and select my polys. And I'm going to do a, a shift move just to create a clone. And I'll call it arch. And OK. And now what I'll do is select that, move it across. Now I just want to fix up my pivot at the moment too. So quickly do that. OK, that's easy to work with. So I'm just going to zoom into that. Now to create my archway. Pretty much if I go into poly sub-object level and I either want to chop that off or chop that off. Either way is fine. I might go for this way. And essentially what you can do from there is I could then just select these two bottom edges and start to drag down. Simple as that. Now there's some unevenness that I would want to take care of here. The 
quickest way to do that is I've got into my scale tool and what I'm doing is I'm just scaling down, down, down until that appears to be nice and straight. Okay, let's have a bit of a look at that. There you have it. So if I then wanted to uh, dress that up a bit more, I've gone into poly mode and I could, for example, extrude that out. And that is definitely the making of an eye tray. And you can even do all of your different dressing bits and pieces that you might do. So, for example, selecting some polys there, there, there. And I might choose to either bevel those in or extrude them in. Let's try bevel. And I could either come out or in, whatever I felt was right. So I'll actually go out and then with the second part of the bevel just in a little bit like that. <sighs> just to get some of that basic decoration that I'm after. That's a bit over the top to say the least. So I might uh, pull those back. But you get the idea. So that's the tool and its basic use. Just one thing to keep on mind while we do talk about it, so if I come back over here to the main grid, front view and zoom in, you need to select enough geometry to get the effect that you're after. So for example, if I just select a 4x4, four four, that's really not going to be enough. This is what's going to happen. I'm just going to zoom into that, inset, delete, go to my edge mode, double click to get the loop. Go to the circle. Uh, the best circle it can create is that. It's just, that's all you can do from that many points. So just keep that in mind as you're trying to make your circles. The more geometry you select, the better your circle's going to end up looking. Okay, so that brings it all together, I think. Hopefully you can make that all go well for yourself. Until next time, happy modeling.